Thank you so very much for joining us this morning. It's such a blessing to hear from each and every one of y'all. Continue to keep uh, each one in prayer as we list the uh, prayer requests that we have that come from week to week. 
Pray for Alexis, and she'll be having her upcoming treatment this Tuesday. Uh, she'll be receiving antibodies. It's an eight-hour process, and this is her first treatment uh, that she'll have for the next uh, two years, according to plan. Uh, once a month for the next two years. So continue to keep her in prayer, and uh, and let's go ahead and go to prayer. And remember, if you have any requests, prayer requests, go ahead and send them in the comments. Leave a, a message. Let us know that you've joined us. And uh, it's encouragement to everybody. But let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for your love and goodness. We thank you for the requests that are made known public and private. Father, in all things, we'll give you the honor and glory. We pray to be with this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. And I pray to enjoy the songs coming up. to Psalms 23 where we're referencing um, valley moments and uh, we'll continue on this week because it's such a something that we all deal with uh, we all go through valleys uh, before in between mountaintops and uh, times of up times of down and the word of God has laid out great foundations for those for us to look at for those who experience those things but we look at Psalms 23, and it says, uh, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Um, so we see all those things that he provides, protects, guides, and leads. And then verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So we're focusing a bit on um, valley moments. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, the Word of God has laid out foundations for us to look at. Examples, if you would, uh, to consider. So that way, whenever we're experiencing, not, maybe not perhaps the same exact thing, 
that when we're experiencing different things, we can say, hey, this person in the Bible went through this. And the Word of God says, and he was with them, gave them comfort, strength, um, whether it's male or female. And there's so many different stories we see in reference to the Word of God. At the conclusion of uh, close to the end of death of John the Baptist, uh, we'll see that later on. Jesus said, amongst women, there has not been one greater born than John the Baptist. That's a pretty great statement that the Lord Jesus Christ would give in testimony of John the Baptist. Amongst women, um, there hasn't been one greater born than John the Baptist. And who is John the Baptist? He was a cousin of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it was prophetic that he would be born. And so we'll look a little bit about John the Baptist's life, dedication, and uh, what, in essence, was his valley moment. And uh, people would question him, and they perhaps could say, well, look at this guy. But the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he ends up giving um, a word of encouragement we see in his valley moment. But Luke chapter 1 is talking about um, uh, the, the, who, the, the, the beginning of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, what was all entailed. For example, it says in Luke 1 verse 1, For as much as uh, many had taken in hand to set forth uh, the order, the declaration of those things, which the most surely believed among us, even as they delivered unto us, which is from the beginning, from eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So, as the words are pinned down here, it talks about um, this is from eyewitnesses. Um, Luke is bearing record what was told to him. And uh, also he was with Paul, the apostle, and uh, but uh, received these witnesses. And listen verse 2 as he begins um, the, the verse. Even as they delivered them among us, which are from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me to also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first, to write to thee in order, most excellent Philopolis, that thou mightest know certainty of things which were as thou hast been instructed. Now he begins with Herod and talks about a little bit about Herod and uh, Zacchaeus and uh, as we continue on it says and there was in those days Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacche Zacharias of course of Abadiah and his wife a daughter of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth so Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist it says and they were both righteous before God so the parents of John the Baptist were considered righteous before God he grew up in a um, believing home uh, and notice what it says in verse 6 and they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless it's a pretty mess, uh, amazing testimony of the parents of John the Baptist and then it says as they had no child because Elizabeth was barren they both were now well stricken in years and it came to pass while he executed the, his priest's office before God in order of his course, according to the custom of the chief priest's office, his lot was to burn incense, and when he went to the temple of the Lord. So we see that uh, his uh, position was a, um, a priest, which you know that he'd be from the tribe of Levi. And uh, so John the Baptist's father was a priest. <clears throat> Performing his duties, burning incense, and that was his responsibility. It says, and the whole multitude of people were praying out of the death time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing in the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you may imagine how many times he had done this. <clears throat> Um, job is uh, priestly duty of burning the incense. Um, the Lord God says he was found to be faithful. And uh, this is something obviously was a first for him. <laughs> and we all go through first, right? Um, he's performing his duties. He loves the Lord. Uh, he's doing everything according to what he's supposed to be doing. Uh, burning the incense. And boof, here appears an angel of the Lord. 
And there appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for the, thy prayer is heard. So obviously they've been praying for a child, but they are well stricken in years. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. That had to be encouraging. Um, you never know uh, how the Lord blesses you from time to time. We neglect to think about it. Um, but he was being faithful. For many many years him and his wife Elizabeth and, and prayerful considered be righteousness and uh, think about it if one of those moments he said oh, let's just give up praying what role don't even pray for that but they continued to be to prayer and the Lord answered that prayer so um, that's something that's a uh, something that had to be very encouraging to him it says as we continue on <clears throat> we know that the angels already named the son to be John and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. What a testimony that is, that they have been faithful all these years, and serving the Lord and following the commandments, though, because they're there under the law. Um, it says, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And after all these years of their faithfulness to the Lord, uh, the Lord would bless them with a child, John. And what would be their, the future to look forward to? Well, it says, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. What an encouragement thing, encouraging thing to look forward to, to realize that because of your faithfulness, your love to the Lord, that he's going to bless you. And not only bless you, but what he blesses you with is going to bless many others also. Because it says here, many shall rejoice at his birth. What a testimony. Hope you enjoy the music coming up.
Welcome back as we continue looking at the uh, blessing of uh, Zacharias when it came to his son to be born, John, and how that was encouragement to him and his family and many others as well. And this is all in reference to um, valley moments, the shadow of death. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Um, that we see blessings um, that come, but then also there are times that even amongst blessings that sometimes you go through the shadows. And as we continue on, uh, we notice that we, we left off with, Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. So that's encouraging that his son would be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God. So what an amazing thing that these two parents who were faithful, now their son, John, is going to be turning people to the Lord. It says, And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children and disobedient to the wisdom and the just to make ready the people, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So John's essence was a forerunner of Christ to come to bear witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and him coming forth. Obviously, for time's sake, we're not able to cover every single aspect of John's life, but merely talking about uh, valley moments. In John chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, And then begin in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the, there you see them together and they're one. In the beginning was the Word, so we have the Word. And the Word was with God, so you have two separate. You have the Word and then you have God. And then it says, and the Word was God. Who is that Word? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 14 it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So there it tells you about the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus Christ is God, according to the Word of God, three in one. And it says, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. You remember at the beginning in Genesis, God said, Let us make man in our image. And uh, so they created man, Adam and Eve. Uh, well, they created Adam first in the image of God. And then Adam was alone. So then they created uh, Eve. It says, All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So before Christ came on the scene, but obviously he was in heaven already, and that before he was to be born, John the Baptist was to come to be foretell, to prepare the people that the Messiah was coming. It says, and in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's talking about when Jesus Christ came, he is that light. He says he is the light. He says, I am the light of the world. But it says the darkness comprehended it not. People did not comprehend him. Many, but many believed as well. It says, and there was a man sent from God. It's amazing when you see who sent him. It's God. God had a plan, a purpose for John. He established it from the very beginning. And uh, God has a purpose and plan for each and every one of us. But we have to be uh, allow him to lead us and guide us and direct us. <clears throat> Notice what it says. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. So John the Baptist was supposed to explain about Christ's coming, that all men through him might believe. That's a heavy responsibility that fell on John. Uh, you would think, um, people would say, what's so special about you? Uh, where do you get this information from? Well, of course, he'd be able to share from the um, prophets. But also, he was given some new insight. 
by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because when we saw earlier, it said that the Holy Spirit would be with them uh, even before his birth. And it says, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light. So this is referring to John the Baptist. He is not the light. But was sent to bear witness of that light. Again, what a great responsibility that John had to bear but would gladly bear it. He says, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Again, another reference to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, and Christ in, uh, in essence, in creation. It says, He was in the world, <clears throat> that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. That's the Lord Jesus Christ specifically. He was in the world, and uh, notice as we continue on, he came unto his own, and that's talking about the nation of Israel, and his own received him not. So we know that um, when Christ came, that there are some that believed, uh, so there are many, but when we look at the nation of Israel as a whole, they did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and to this day, do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Word of God says that one day that will change. So John had this responsibility of sharing Christ to a people who many would refuse or hard to accept. We see quite often um, the prophets in the Old Testament, how they would get discouraged trying to share God's word, and the people would not um, believe. Um, we see where this perhaps even happened with John. But John did all he could to share about Christ coming with everybody. That, he, that was his job, that was his mission. And as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but the will of man, of God. This is talking about the new birth, that uh, to be born again, as Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He says, how can I do that? I'm old. And go back in my mother's womb. And Christ said, that, uh, um, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Christ was talking about he needed to be born again spiritually. And the Bible talks about the second, the second birth. Um, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Now verse 15 John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So it's interesting that John was born approximately six months before the Lord Jesus Christ. However, he said he was before me. <laughs> Why? Because Christ is eternal. He's God. Did you catch that? John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me. Why does he come after me? Because he was born six months after. It's preferred before me, for he was before me. Again, John sharing about the deity of Christ. Hope you enjoy the music coming up. <laughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. Washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. So 
Welcome back as we continue about uh, our journey through uh, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, sometimes people need encouragement, uh, but not only that, but to realize that, yes, we do have those shadow of death moments that we walk through. And looking at different examples in Scripture, and I pray there will be an encouragement to you. But as we get ready to look this week, and again, we're just kind of... Uh, glancing over because there's so much information on reference to that but we're just trying to give you the point of uh, how certain times even strong believers last week we saw Elijah had got so discouraged and just wanted to die and uh, but the Lord let him know that this journey the journey is too great for thee and he had to depend on the Lord and then after he recovered gave him strength he said then go so he sent them back and uh, this particular situation that we see with John, we see that John had a purpose from the very beginning, like all of us. Um, the Word of God says, Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee in Jeremiah, and uh, ordained thee. And uh, so God already had an uh, example. We see a, a purpose for John. He had a purpose for Jeremiah. Christ came with a purpose. All of us, God has a purpose for us. The Word of God says, He's not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance. So he has a purpose for each and every one of us. And we know, so John, uh, at this point, he's grown. He's sharing his testimony about the Lord. Grew up in a, 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 a Bible-believing home. His dad was a priest, um, and his parents were considered to be faithful. They were elder, older at that time and of his birth. Um, he's the cousin of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we see here, it says, um, No man has seen God at any time. 
the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John. The Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? So John created a huge dust up, I guess you could say. People are like, who is this guy? Converting people, people are coming to believe. He's preaching stuff that's contrary to what we're preaching. Go ask him, who is he? Um, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then art thou, Elias? Now, why would they ask him, is he Elias? Because in Malachi... It talks about that the Lord, the, you know, Elias had came previously and never died. And in Malachi, it mentions that Elias will come before that great and dreadful day of the Lord. And uh, so that's why they ask him, Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou a prophet? He answered, No. So John wasn't prophesying, he was just proclaiming Christ. And then they said unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? So his opportunity to share who he was. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And said the prophet Isaiah. I said the prophet Isaiah. He is quoting from a prophet, but he says he is not a prophet. But his responsibility is to, that, to be that voice crying out. Uh, in the wilderness to proclaim Christ and his coming. And they which were sent of the Pharisees, they asked him and said unto him, Why, why, baptize, why baptize thou then, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? And John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latched I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Barthbaria, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God. So this is something that John is proclaiming to all those people. But what type of lamb? He would be that sacrificial lamb for us. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that's what John was doing. He was proclaiming Christ to everybody. He mentions this three different times. This he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. So he's saying, I was born before him, but he is still before me. Again, his deity, the Christ deity. And I knew him not but he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a voice, like a dove, a boat, a boat on him. So John ended up baptizing the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that his Spirit came down as a dove. And it say it was a dove. <laughs> it just said his Spirit descended as a dove uh, gently and uh, abode with him. He says, I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. And the same said unto him, Upon whom shalt thou spirit descending and remaining on him? The same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So he, there, he's sharing his testimony of Christ. Again, the next day after John stood, two of his disciples, looking upon Jesus, and he walked and saith, Behold the Lamb of God. Again, uh, John very written uh, record of the Lord Jesus Christ by calling him, Behold the Lamb of God. And he does this again. So two of his disciples saw Jesus. He says, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following and saith, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? And he saith, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. And then again, it says, One of the two which heard John speak followed him, which was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. 
and he findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, I have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. So isn't that wonderful? He brought his brother to Jesus. And uh, that's what we need to do. You bring your family uh, to Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus beheld him and said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is being interpreted the stone. And the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip. And saith unto him, Follow me. And again, uh, we see later on where John, uh, in another reference, would say, Behold the Lamb of God. So you think about the life of John the Baptist, proclaiming Christ, uh, people questioning him, authorities, uh, priests, uh, the Levites, and Pharisees. And and uh, it'd get to the point where um, even Herod and, and uh, his brother and all that, that John would end up being persecuted for his faith and would be end up being cast into prison and end up, uh, his future would be his head to be put on a platter. And think about John's faithfulness, his family, his, uh, his parents, their faithfulness, him proclaiming the word of God, proclaiming Christ. And at this point, now he's in prison, locked up. Then he begins to question things. What's going on? Why am I in prison? Why am I not sharing God's word? Um, and then this is where we come to John's uh, desert moment as a valley moment. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So here's John's valley moment. Matthew chapter 11 says, And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence, and to teach and to preach in their cities. And now when John heard in the prison, so where was John? He was in the prison, of the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And that statement weighs heavy on John even referencing that question to his disciples. Not only was he... Um, questioning the Lord because of the circumstance he was in, in prison, about to get his head cut off. He mentions this to his disciples. Go ask him, is he the one or should we look for another? In essence, has everything I've been doing in my life, has everything that my parents have said to me, has all this been for no reason, for not? Again, now when John heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, his own disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John had to be very, very discouraged, um, realizing that, hey, has everything I've been doing been for nothing? Because he's in prison getting ready to be killed. He got discouraged. And notice the Lord sends back word about the things, the miracles that are going on. And notice what uh, Jesus responds to the disciples that were there. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. So he's talking about this is John that it was prophesied about. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of a woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding that he is at least of the kingdom of heaven as greater than he. Again, verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, which are all of us, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. What an amazing statement. Notwithstanding, he that is least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. John the Baptist to say this statement and then Jesus to give his statement and uh, to send back encouraging word to John the Baptist. Um, sometimes we have doubts and questions about things. Things weigh heavy on us. Um, we have concerns. We question ourselves. We question the things of God sometimes. 
But we realize, based on God's word, that God does have a purpose for each and every one of us. And what an amazing thing we see here. John in his weakest moment, in his valley moment, saying, has everything I've been doing been for no reason? And Jesus reiterates that he is that witness that came before him, the share of Christ. And there's not one greater born from women than John the Baptist. What an amazing statement. How that had to be encouraging the John, right before his death have it, but that had to be encouraging. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, we know that the Lord is with us. He comforts us. He guides us. And even amongst death, there's nothing to fear. Uh, because he loves us and has compassion for us. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, as we continue on Valley Moments, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Pray that you bless this day. Encourage us through Valley Moments that we know that we can depend on you because you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You comfort us, you lead us, you guide us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you and God bless. Have a wonderful week. Lately I've been looking back Along this winding road To the old familiar markers Of the mercies I have known I know it may sound simple But it's more than a cliché There's no better way to tell you Than to say God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could, cause through it all, God's been good. Times replay and I can see that I've cried some bitter tears But I felt His arms around me as I faced my greatest fears I've had more gains than losses and I've known more joy than hurt As Your grace rolled down upon me undeserved God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Cause through it all, God's been good. My Savior and my friend His love was my beginning And His love will be my end I could spend forever trying To tell you everything He is But the best way I can say it is this God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could, cause through it all, I wouldn't change them if I could Just through it all